Sirach chapter 19 verse 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of its omnipotency. I want to give our praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, or Ka'a Kodash for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. This lesson is going into how much power do you really want? Okay? How much power do you really want? Because one thing we have to realize as Hebrew Israelites, we have so much power right before our hands, man. So much power that's available. Okay? So much power. And you only realize that once your eye is more single. Okay? Your eye is more single on fearing your how about you now shy. Because he will get you to see it clearly, man. It talks about wisdom being a clear spirit, man. Unspotted, clear. All right? Wisdom is the light. So if your whole body is full of light, then you can see more clearly on what's really in front of you. Okay? All right? So it says the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. All wisdom, man. Now, when you look at this thumbnail, there's a reason why I chose this. Because you can see the world from the moon. Okay? You can see the world from the moon. All right? We need to be in that mind frame, man. Being outside of this world. And that's a process. The more you get outside of this world, the more power you receive from the throne, from your Habashim out shot. That's the reality. That's the reality, man. And if this is going over your head, it's because you're thinking about doing some bullshit that don't matter. Okay? You're foggy. That's not single-minded, man. Okay? Think about that in the spirit. Now, let's go to Google definition on omnipotency. It says the quality of having unlimited or great power. Okay? Don't you want to have that knowledge? All right? But the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. You will have that knowledge if you get outside of this world, get outside of your own pleasures and have more pleasure in your how about shimmy how shy. That's how you receive that power, man. <laughs> Think about the things you can do, man. See, there's a reason why your how shy, when he was on the scene, was saying the different things he was saying about moving mountains, the faith. Okay? The faith comes from the confidence and belief. All that's together in one bowl. Okay, the fear of the Lord develops a strong confidence within yourself, within your spirit to go outside of this world and really believe on that level. Okay, to join up with that power, man, to have that power behind you. Why do you think David was so confident? King David. Let's use him for an example. Okay, you also can talk about Elijah, Elisha. Okay, because Elisha was confident that he would receive a double portion of Elijah's spirit to the point even Elijah was like man that's that's a heavy thing to ask okay but one thing they understood is the fear of the Lord they understood that that's where the power comes from fearing that's where it comes from man so when you read about different things that were happening it's because their mind was outside of the world on a very very high level okay so how much power do you really want? <laughs> That's when you get very serious. All right. Let's go to James chapter four. Let's start at verse seven. Submit yourselves, therefore, to your high shot. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You got to be in the power of the mind frame. OK, which is a lot of power of resisting the devil. You got to have more pleasure in that. Where is your pleasure in that versus it being a burden on you, man? You got to have more pleasure in resisting and fighting this devil, these demons, okay? Because they're after you every day. But your fear, okay? It talks about in Sirach, I'm not going to get it, I'll quote it. It talks about in Sirach, chapter 1, verse 21, 20 to 21, okay? About wisdom being the root, about fear being the root of wisdom, and that wherever the fear of the Lord is present, it driveth away sin. It gives you the power to resist the devil. Think about it, man. Yahweh Bashim Abishai wants you to fear them. <laughs> That's what they're looking at, man. Do you fear them or not in your faith? Sounding all smart and thinking you know everything, that can only take you so far. 
you get more of the praise of man in that mind state. But it talks about those who fear your how about you, shy is greater than those who think they got all this wisdom because they know this and know that and know this and know that. No, nah, man. The one who fear the Lord heavily is going to be outside of the world. Like you've seen that thumbnail. <laughs> they're going to be looking at the world from afar and they're going to feel powerful, man. They're going to feel the electricity going through their spirit of wisdom, of power, pure power. Verse 8. Draw nine to your how about you, shy, and he will draw nine to you. Right, man. Okay, so you want to have that power? You want to have more of that power and really live it and be outside of this world, really? And be in that place, that spiritual, powerful place? You got to focus on fearing the Lord more, man. Okay? It talks about wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Focus on the treasure. Okay? I repeat, we have so much power in front of us. But what is distracting you from understanding that and moving towards that full speed is the bullshit in front of you that you're choosing over fearing your how about you, shy. You got to look in the mirror, man. We all got to look in the mirror and face that. Like now. Okay, because the thing that's coming down the pipe, you're going to need as much power, man, to survive it. Okay? A lot of things are coming down the pipe, man. If you don't see it, I don't know what to tell you. That's why we do these lessons. To exhort you, man. To help put you in the right mind frame, man. To see what this is. All right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Right, man. So, what level is your fear on, man? If you're sowing sparingly in fear of the Lord, then you're going to reap sparingly. Why? Because fear is the root of wisdom. So when you talk about wisdom, which take you to the kingdom, which I'm going to get in a minute, okay, your whole goal is to go where? To the kingdom of heaven. Okay, to be changed. Immortality. So, if your fear level is sparingly, and it's not growing, then you're going to reap sparingly. Okay? Meaning you're going to be involved in more bullshit. That's how it works. But it says, And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Right. But if you put your fear game and you invest more in fear in your high by shy, you're going to reap amazingly, man. Even before he come back, you're going to be outside of this world, man. You're going to feel that electricity of power because he's going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. Okay, so when you're reading the scriptures, man, these things are written for our learning in these different stories, man. And you're like, wow, how'd they do that? How you think they did it, man? You think they just did it because they did it? No, they did it because Yahabah Shemal was shot, looked down from heaven, saw that their fear, okay, that was sowing bountifully, and fearing them, fearing Yahweh Shem Hawashai, the Most High. So in return, he gave them more wisdom because fear is the root of wisdom. So their wisdom grew. Okay? So they had the wisdom of calling on the Lord and doing these things and having the confidence and having the faith, and things just happen. Boom, boom, boom. And it's written about because of that. Okay? So think about that, man. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So I'm going to say it again. How much power do you really want? How much power do you really want? Ask yourself that, man. Meditate about it. You can make your mind up, man. Tomorrow's not promised, but you are in today. You can make your mind up and say enough is enough. All right? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 4. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne. So you want Yahweh Bashim Awashai to give you wisdom from the throne? That special place. You want him to send wisdom down to you. What are you doing? What have you done? Where is your mind state? Are you focused on him or not? Do you fear him or not? Because the root of wisdom is fear. So you want him to send down that wisdom of all kinds of spiritual gifts, okay, 
of his omnipotency, of his power? Let's go back to the definition in Google. The quality of having unlimited or great power. So you want to be a part of that great power and him to use you. Okay. High love of miracles, spiritual power, raising up the dead, doing all kinds of things of that power, man. That takes wisdom to know how to do that, man. You think the disciples did that without wisdom? No. <laughs> Come on now. You know, so when Yahweh Shah was on the scene, before he left, he really taught them, man, how to really be single-minded, man, and only have faith and only believe and fear Yahweh Shah. He really taught that, okay, to the disciples, man. The different things they went through that's written down, man, it was for them to get on that level. So when he left, they could carry it on the right way and glorify Yahweh Shah, man, and be used as vessels, okay, to push forward that power. Come on now. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 4. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne, and reject me not from among thy children. Reject me not from among thy children. So without wisdom, you are rejected. Without fear, you have no wisdom, because that's the root of wisdom. So shouldn't you focus on fear? Shouldn't that be your main focus? I'm going to tell you why it should be your main focus. Because through wisdom comes everything. So if you focus on fear, which is the root of wisdom, your wisdom is going to grow because that's the root. You need healthy roots for your plant to grow, which is the wisdom. You want the leaves, you want the everything to grow, the buds, the flowers, everything. The more you focus on fear, the more that's going to happen. The more wisdom you get the more clear you're going to be, the more single-minded you're going to be. Okay? That's why you should focus on fear because everything comes out of that. Okay? Everything comes out of that, man. All right? Now from there, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, start at verse 15. To thank therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom. It's perfection. You want to perfect your wisdom? Fear. Okay? And whoso watches for her shall quickly be without care. Quickly be without care. That's how you get outside of this world, man. To be quickly without care and having that mind state. You see the world from afar, even though you're in it. Using the world, but not abusing the world, man. You don't give a damn about this goddamn place. Okay. Verse 16. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, show of herself favorable unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. That's how the disciples and the prophets in general, okay, in the book, were doing these different things, man, because wisdom was meeting them in their thoughts. Wisdom was doing that. Wisdom was guiding them, okay? Everything you read about that you're amazed about, who you think guided them? The Most High sent wisdom down to meet them in their thoughts, man, to carry out the things that we read about. Meaning their fear was on a high level, man. All right? Verse 17. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. And the care of discipline is love. Your desire has to be more on fearing Yahweh Shai than the desires of this world, of this life. That's why it's hard for you to see the world from afar and still be on the earth. <laughs> you on the earth, but you're seeing it from a whole nother world, man. Okay? You're seeing it from the universe. That's high level. Verse 18. And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto Yahweh Shah. Right. Draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh unto you. And if you get closer to him, what do you think you're going to feel like? You think you're going to feel the same? How are you going to feel the same, man? It's impossible to feel the same if you get closer to him. You're going to feel more of that energy, man. That power, that wisdom. The spirit that's coming from the heavens, man. Coming from the throne. That's not a small deal. That's serious. Verse 20. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. And that's the whole point, man. 
the desire of wisdom, bring it to the kingdom, man. Seek the kingdom, seek wisdom, and everything shall be added. Don't worry about nothing else, man. Okay? Because while you on the earth, but you're seeing the earth, you're seeing this world from afar. Your high boss, your is going to have you in a certain place. And everything is going to be taken care of for you. All the way up to salvation. To your high shot coming down and cracking the sky, man. Then you receive your full power. Being changed. Okay? So, with that, man, take it seriously, man. How much power do you really want? Ask yourself that question. Okay? Matter of fact, let me end it on this scripture. Verse 21. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, all you kings of the people, honor wisdom, honor fear, which is the root of wisdom, that you may reign forevermore. Right, man. Then for you know it, man, you be ruling in the kingdom of heaven forever. So focus on that, brothers, in the spirit, man. With that, I want to give our praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kaak, or Dach, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honor to the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to your Akamad that is doing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.